there's not many charging stations on Sky and there's not many campsites either. Okay. So we, we could be in a lot of trouble here. Off we go to the Isle of Sky. If that one's not working, then we might have to call off Sky, will we? Oh my word. Basically, that's why no one's using that. Um, we need to find another one, I think. Yeah. And we need to understand what's going on. So we're, I think we're, we're pushing the limit of what's possible anyway. I think we're gonna have to rearrange our trip if we can't charge. This scenery is just absolutely out of this world, but this road is terrifying. We're up, we're against the clock. <laughs> it's so majestic. Welcome back to the channel. We're Janine and Liam Day, a married couple who have spent the last two years doing van life in the UK. Last week, as our own camper van had let us down once again, we got an invite to come to the north of Scotland to have a completely unique adventure in a one-of-a-kind vehicle. It's going to be our first time ever driving an electric camper van, so without much of a clue, we have decided to take it on a trip to one of our all-time bucket list destinations, the Isle of Skye. But is Skye and North West Scotland at all geared up for electric campers or are we about to drive into a nightmare? It's going to be a bumpy road, so buckle up and join us as we're about to head over to one of the world's most dramatic islands. Welcome back to the channel. We are in the northwest of Scotland. And if you watched the last episode, you know exactly what this is behind us. If you didn't, this we swapped our large camper van, motorhome, sort of converted motorhome thing, Morgan, for this. This is a beautiful, classic VW 1970s camper and it actually is as well it's it's that's exactly what it is but it's just the shell of a 1970s VW camper it's actually the big twist for this thing is it's one of the only ones in the country I think that's completely converted to be electric as well so that there isn't just your standard leisure battery charging that's actually charging up the batteries of the whole vehicle it's got a Tesla battery just in the back here it is absolutely mind-blowing and fascinating we've already driven a short distance from we, we arrived via overnight train uh, if you didn't go watch that it's really interesting from london to fort william we had no idea there was overnight trains in this country um, and then we've arrived and then we drove from fort william to here here is a beautiful spot dorney i think it's dorney castle it's one of the most photographed castles uh, in scotland and today we are not far from the bridge that goes over to the Isle of Skye. So you didn't guess it, that's where we're going. Ginny and I have never been before. We don't know what to expect. Um, it is summertime, so there's quite a few motorhomes about up here in the north of Scotland. Um, but it's gonna be dead interesting because for the first time, we've just gotten used to driving in Morgan, you know, all of his quirks. Now we're about to drive on this adventure before we go to Ireland, and Ireland is coming up in the next couple of weeks, so don't worry about that. Um, but this is good preparation for it. For the first time ever, we're having to sort of learn how to drive an electric vehicle and live in an electric vehicle and camp in an electric vehicle with an induction hub and all the rest of it. It's very, very different. It's very, very different. Uh, it's a left-hand drive um, vehicle that's also quite challenging. And yeah, it's just um, an interesting uh, time and adaptation. So let's go and see what the Isle of Skye is like. Let's go and see if we can make it round this before the weather comes. And in two days time, the weather is coming and it's gonna come hard. So we've got just that short amount of time to go and see as much as we can of the Isle of Skye. So let's go. So first thing we've got to do is get onto Skye. We can go by ferry or bridge. Bridge is cheaper. So I think we're going to do that. <laughs> we've got 90 miles range, and I think within about 80 miles, we've got to charge. So we'll go, we'll cross the bridge first, and then we'll, then we'll work out what we're doing when we're on Sky, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Off we go to the Isle of Sky. It's a place that I've never been before, Liam's never been before, and we're both really, really looking forward to getting there and checking it out. We've only ever seen it on other YouTube videos or on TV, and it just looks insane, so, yeah, let's go. We headed off on our epic road trip here in the north and in true Scottish fashion, it started raining. Oh my God, it's chucking it down. Absolutely chucking it down. I thought, I thought it was gonna be sunny today, but it's not. <laughs> true Scottish weather, embrace the rain. just entered 
entered the Isle of Skye and we are heading north. We're gonna to go to a place called Portree where we're going to recharge our battery um, in the van and then once we've got a full charge, we're gonna do a full loop um, of the north part of the Isle of Skye. And that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna head north now. We made our way to Portree, the main town of the Isle of Skye. And thanks to the rainstorm, our entrance to the island couldn't have looked more dramatic. We drove through the spectacular scenery, getting our very first taste of this rugged little island. Oh, it's out of order. <gasps> oh no. Is it completely out of order? No, that's why no one's using it. This is the major town in the whole of Sky. Basically, that's why no one's using that. Um, we need to find another one, I think. Yeah. And we need to understand what's going on. So let me just do a bit of Google in a second. There's, there's only two on this side of the island and we're gonna pray that the next one has got, um, has got is, is working, because that one isn't. If that one's not working, then we might have to call off Sky. Were we? Oh my word. It's a strange thing relying on an electric point when you're not used to it. It's very hard to get your head around because you're so used to going in garages and topping up on fuel, on petrol or diesel. So yeah, it's just something you gotta, you got to get your head around. We're on Sky. We're on a remote island in northwest Scotland, which isn't known. I mean, there's no supermarkets or anything. So we're, I think we're, we're pushing the limit of what's possible anyway. Yeah. But I think I think we can do it. It's 2023, I think we can do it. I think yeah. we can. Then we just don't need them to be out of order. <laughs> Praying for our Isle of Sky dreams to not be over, we headed off to our last hope of charge this side of the island. Oh yeah, look, there's no need to worry. No? Yeah, just get the, the wire out, we should be in. It looks all right, I, think, I thought they, they, they have like, like, you, like you're charging up, oh my word, the park it, the hat, the, the handbrake doesn't work, so we need to get the chocks out. Yeah, I'll get them out. Um, I, I, yeah, I thought that you, you sort of plug with like, like fuel to try and make it look like you're filling it with fuel. But anyway, we've got a wire, so let's, let's have a look. Oh my God, we are here. Finally, we've arrived at the Isle of Skye and wow, first impressions are, oh my God, this place is insane. I don't know what I was expecting actually, but it certainly wasn't this. Um, it's massive, it's absolutely huge. And yeah, it's really vast. I think that's my first initial sort of impression is that it's just massive, everything about it. And um, it's all foggy and misty. It's kind of ominous and a little bit spooky, dramatic. Like that's, that's the vibe I'm getting from it, which is really, really cool. Um, yeah, and we are going to explore it today, which I'm so excited about. But first, we need charge. We're probably, you've probably got to, yeah, you've probably got to buy a card from the shop. Oh, do you reckon? Yeah. Okay, so Liam's gone inside to see if we can uh, pay or like find out how, how to charge this van. Um, it is asking for a card, so we tried to pay on our card and it said it's invalid or something so hopefully they've got like special charging cards that you buy uh that's all i can think of i think we're gonna have to rearrange our trip if we can't charge charge a van it'll actually be quite scary and it's something that i'm not used to um but we are here to see if it's possible and that is what we're gonna find out good news and bad news uh the bad news is that at least two of the small amount of charging stations on the island, so a big chunk of them there is, um, are out of order, and there may be more. Oh no. Good news is, you don't, need a, you, you don't need a card for it, you can do it through an app, but it might not work. And the bad news is, it only works for 50% of the people who use it. We have a 50% chance of this working, so we thought we'd give it a go. We plugged in and prayed. Having time to spare, we headed into the Sky Candle Co, which has a shop, toilets, a cinema, and a cafe. What's, what's the crack? Uh, Houston, we've got a problem. Oh no. <laughs> um, it's saying it's charging, but it's not charging. She said we, we're, that we're now in the 50% of people that come here and don't get to charge. So the largest town on Sky, doesn't have any charge and it's the one we were relying on. There's two charge stations and we were, so what we're gonna have to do is find a campsite to go to and charge up there, pay for the night, charge up there first and then 
go on an adventure and then come back and charge overnight. So we yeah. have to stay at a campsite tonight. Okay, that's fine though. But okay. we have to find a, but there's not many campsites. There's not many charging stations on Sky and there's not many campsites either. Okay. So we, we could be in a lot of trouble here. So I need to work out what we're gonna do. Okay. In urgent need of a campsite with hookup, we spent some time drinking coffee and desperately trying to book one. Luckily we found one with availability, which we aim to go to ASAP, but since we're in this beautiful town, we decided to check it out first. Oh, you're such a <laughs> <laughs> You can't do it. I can't. Ah! Oh! There you go. I want that every time. Oh, I, bet, I bet you believe it. <laughs> We headed off into Portree, which is the largest town and capital of the Isle of Skye, a quaint harbour town and the location of the only secondary school on the island. Like many tourist towns, it's also full of gift shops and cafes, where we took advantage of a delicious leek and potato soup and a cake. Okay, we're back at the van, that food was awesome, it was so nice, and now we are heading to our campsite to finally get this camper van charged up. So this is Yug Bay campsite and actually it's really nice, it's in the most gorgeous area, look at these big mountains behind us and there's a ferry port nearby, not sure where the ferry goes uh, but it's yeah very simple, there is a hookup, toilets and you're out in the wild, we're in the middle of nowhere and it's beautiful. It's also first come first serve and all of the other campsites are fully booked so we're actually really lucky to get in here there's a few spots left and we've also got an electric hookup that was the main reason why we went on a bit of a hunt just then to try and find a campsite so we could charge up the battery because we want to explore the island we needed about 60 miles on the clock we have only 20 left so decided to make a cup of tea whilst we wait it will take around four hours time is knocking on but we are determined to see some of this beautiful island before sunset we headed off to see the first on our list of top six things to do on the isle of Skye. As we were cutting across this pass, across the mountains on a single track road, the landscape changed dramatically into almost something you'd see on a different planet. My best friend is a machine gun. Whoa. Oh my god. Oh my god. That's unbelievable. <laughs> oh my god. If I wasn't concentrating on the road so much, because the road is terrible <laughs> and very scary, I would be absolute shock. Wow, this scenery is just absolutely out of this world but this road is terrifying <laughs> it's like the tiniest little road but oh my god it's a huge pothole isn't it the, yeah there's huge potholes it's t really really thin oh my god gotta go and see this it is too good not to not to pull over for so after seeing that <laughs> are you glad you came yes yes well done sweetie <laughs> That makes it all worthwhile, right? Yeah. Very good. Now the adventure has started. <laughs> yes. Look at that! Bloody hell! Whoa. Clear skies and sky! Woohoo! Now we're on the north east side of the island and my god has the scenery changed. It is so incredible. Spikes of mountains are coming up everywhere with real sort of rock faces on them. Very, very dramatic, very, very beautiful, very, very stark and we can actually see the top of the mountains as well, which must be very rare in this part of the world. Heading off to our second viewpoint of the afternoon was the incredible Leet Falls on Skye's Trottenish Peninsula. The falls had an upper viewing deck and were completely free to visit, including the car park, and made a great prelude to what was going to come next. <laughs> it's so majestic, it's so gorgeous. It's like a scene from Robin Hood. <laughs> The sun was going down, so we had just enough time to see another tourist hotspot on Sky. Okay, so we've arrived at our final place for the day, uh, which is the Old Man's Store. It's one of the most popular places to come to on the whole of the island. And we're going to find out why soon. The only problem is, 
is it's getting it's getting dark. Uh, we've left it really, really late to come. And even though it's summer, it's getting dark. We're getting on towards sort of like 8, 8.30. Um, so let's hope it's not too long of a hike. Otherwise, we might get caught out and we've got to get it to, to the other side of the island, that campsite as well. Wish us luck. The walk we chose to go on up to see the store took about 40 minutes and went up the side of a mountain with the dramatic view of the sea behind us. The landscape was a mix of stark mountains, choppy sea and loads of silver severed tree stumps giving the air of eeriness much like a scene out of Lord of the Rings. The old man's store towered above us with sun casting a silhouette and the clouds coming in looking dark as it was quite late. We were the only ones walking at this time but we loved the solitude of it all. So this here behind me is the old man of store and it looks absolutely gorgeous. It looks really dramatic and really eerie as well especially with the dark clouds coming behind it and all of the trees knocked down for some reason. It just makes it really kind of this walk, this trail that we've gone on it's just really eerie, but yeah, beautiful at the same time. Nutcase. <laughs> well, since I was starting to go a bit crazy, we took a couple of pictures in front of Maggie the camper van, then headed back to the campsite. Lo and behold, it was still light when we got back. We popped up the top of the van, set up the bed, and settled down for the night after a very busy day. What a good thing to do. Does it feel early to you? Huh? Does it feel early? We're going to bed early? No. Do you know what time it is? Ten. It's half nine. <sighs> <sighs> Wish that I could stay. Wish for this moment to never go away. But it's all in my mind. And though I know that there is nothing to find. You're a beautiful sight in the summer night and you can't put up a fight in the misty light Good morning from Uig, Uig, UIG in the north of Skye and it is absolutely beautiful this morning. There are rabbits jumping around, there's sun bathing the whole of this northern coast in green and golden light and it is just beautiful. Today marks the last day of sunshine on Skye before it rains for about a week straight. So we have to get everything in today. So apologies if we miss anything, but I think we're seeing the best stuff. Um, and it's gonna be a good one today. It's gonna to be a good one. And I've got to say, with regards to staying in and driving in the electric van, today marks the first day where it really has clicked and we're getting used to it. Um, things are starting to come together. You know when you find a system, when two of you are in a small space and you work together in that system, you both have your own roles, that's what we've got at the moment and it's working out really, really well. So now we're, we're, we're super enjoying it. We were just enjoying it before, now we're super enjoying it. Um, so onward journey is gonna be fantastic from now on, of course. And the first place we're going to today is gonna to be, is Janine's favorite out of the whole list of places we're going to see on the Isle of Sky. So let's get going. And we are here, we are at a place called the Fairy Glen, which is a mystical, magical place on the Isle of Skye with a really obscure sort of landscape that looks like a fairy garden. That's why I think it's called the Fairy Glen. It looks like fairies should be living here. And as we were coming down, it's absolutely gorgeous. The landscape is just incredible. 
Wow, that is well pretty. Oh my God, it's so cute. It's got little beautiful little flowers everywhere, little tiny little hills. If you've watched Lord of the Rings, it's like Hobbiton. Yeah. Like you can imagine little sort of hobbits living in these little houses around here. <laughs> It's beautiful. There's foxgloves everywhere as well, which are, are they known as the fairy flowers? Yeah. I think they are, I think they are. This is absolutely stunning. When they say that, um, we think that Scotland's so close to like, like New Zealand. New Zealand is a beautiful country and Scotland is a beautiful country. Both jaw dropping. The Fairy Glen is located close to our campsite in Uig and is possibly the most fairy tale looking place on the planet. Yet despite Sky's links to the legends of fairies, this place is named the Fairy Glen only by its aesthetics, formed by miniature landslides giving this place a very magical look. The fairy circle's over here, so you've got to pick up a stone yeah. and put it into the circle over there. Oh, what, in there? Yeah. Okay, cool. Here we go, got my stone. And what does it do if you do it? Well, apparently this is like a proper tourist thing <laughs> that, and the locals hate it. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, sorry, locals. But they say, anyway, that what they say is, is that what I read was you put the stone down there and, uh, and you get good luck or good fortune or something. Good fortune? Yeah, we need a bit of that, don't we? Yeah. I'll put it close to the middle then. For some reason it feels like we'll get better fortune. There we go. There's hey. the rock. Well done. We finished our time at the beautiful Fairy Glen by throwing some money into the stone circle, Liam doing a dance before heading back to the van. Okay, so we're back in the van now. The Fairy Glen was so cute. It was such a nice way to start the day, but we are on to bigger and better things. We are off now. We're going to go to the coast. I'm so excited. I believe Liam's really excited as well. Fingers crossed, we're going to see some whales. We don't know if it's possible, but hopefully we are praying that we're gonna see some whales, so let's go. Let's do it, let's go see some whales. We made our way to the marina in the town of Portree, where yesterday we had booked a trip with seafarers. They had seen minke whales the previous day to our booking, so we felt lucky that it might happen to us also. We got our safety briefing and headed to the Pretty Cool Rib, which is one of the fastest and safest boats in the harbour, then set sail to see some nature. What's that pet Oh yeah, whales, eh? thank you. So let's go find some whales, eh? Or at yes. least some dolphins or some seals or something. 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 Whales would be best, but anything will do. Yeah, anything will do. The boat trip left the harbour and immediately we loved the experience. We skimmed across the top of the water so smoothly and with tremendous speed. Our first sighting was a pair of white tipped sea eagles, which followed by a sighting of a golden eagle. But almost as stunning was seeing sky from a different perspective. It literally juts out the ocean like a hundred black daggers and only by boat could we really take in its whole beauty. Unfortunately there were no whales out in the sea today, but before heading back to shore, we were very lucky to see the first seal pup of the season, who couldn't have been more than a day old. It was a beautiful sight and one we had never seen before. Well, as cold as that was, um, it was actually really, really good. We didn't see whales. <laughs> one day, one day. Um, we didn't see dolphins, we didn't see whales, but we did see a seal pup um, that had just been born. Um, the first one of the season, which is really, really good. And we got um, lots of seabirds, two different types of sea eagle, uh, one sea eagle and a golden eagle. Um, but it was just really nice. The best part about it for me was seeing sky from the boat, which I think was the best shot of sky we've seen for the whole of this trip so far. So it's well worth it just to do that. 36 quid, 37 quid, something like that um, for a two hour boat ride. Not too bad as far as boat rides go. And uh, it was a wonderful boat ride as well. Okay, so I'm still trying to thaw out a little bit from that freezing cold boat trip which was really good by the way. Um, and now we are off to our final place that we're going to today in Skye. We're gonna try and get there before the rain comes. 
the clouds are starting to come over. We are expecting rain, so. We're expecting rain tomorrow. It's actually coming a lot sooner, mm. hell of a lot sooner. And that's just what happens in North Scotland, right? Yeah, for sure. So we, we're, up, we're against the clock. Yeah, we're gonna do this. So off we headed to our final sightseeing spot on Skye, the beautiful Fairy Pools. To be honest, the drive here is as beautiful as the pools themselves, and once again this place is fairy by look, not by literature. A long waterfall that has carved out tiny little pools of clear blue water all along it, where you can imagine fairies come here to bathe. We went for a walk along the side of the falls, and with it grew a thirst to take a dip in the pools ourselves. So that's what we did. Oh man, alive, that felt good. It's like the perfect, perfect temperature if you like sort of not too icy cold water swimming. Um, and just really refreshing. Little ledges in there so you can sit down and it's, it comes up, it's deep enough so you, so you don't have to tread water. Just so good, so good. I'm so glad we came here. Perfect fairy pool, best fairy pool I've ever been in. By a mile. Didn't see any fairies. Didn't see any fairies. I've got fairy feeling in my legs right now. <laughs> As sad as it was, it was time to leave the ferry pools and unfortunately, sky all together. We headed back to Maggie, our electric VW camper van, and took one last look at the incredible scenery surrounding us. We knew heavy rains would come from tonight onwards, so our next stop was to find some charge for the van and get off the island. But unfortunately, the last charge point on sky was broken, much like the others. We just about made it over the bridge and into the town of Kyle, to the next charger, but unfortunately, it was capped at 45 minutes with a really slow charge. Luckily a campsite was not far away so we decided that's where we would spend the evening. Look we've got charge. That is charging for the next 12 hours at least um, until we work out what we're doing next. We've managed to find a campsite. We're at Re-Rig campsite. The last place that we got the 45 minutes charge gave us, gave us just enough boost to get here and um, yeah, we're very, very grateful for it to be honest with you. Janine is absolutely whacked. <laughs> um, it's been challenging, it's been very, very challenging, but I've got to say, I've had a lot of fun and so has Janine as well. It's been, it's been a lot of fun. Driving this is very, very, very cool. It's a cool vehicle to drive. You've just got to work out the charge points, the campsites and all that sort of business. So we did this all very last minute and we've just proven that sky can be done last minute in summer. But I think we got lucky. So if you're going to do it yourself, make sure you book into campsites. Just book in advance. Don't rely on the charging stations and you'll have a great time. And if we can do it, you can do it. Please join us next time. If you've liked this sort of weird alternative guide to Sky in an electric vehicle, then please give the video a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. And we'll see you next time for some more van life adventures. Let's hold on tight Found what we're looking for in life Call us crazy But things are finally right With you and I The future is bright